We are now joined by the defending race winner of the Auto Club 400, and that is Martin Truex Jr., driver of the number 19 Bass Pro Shops Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. We'll open the floor up for questions. Uh, we'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start over here and then go to the postman. Uh, Martin Justin Schuler from Speedway Media. Congratulations on being inducted to the uh, Walk of Fame here at Auto Club. Tell Thank us you. A little bit about that. Yeah, it was, that's really cool. You know, it's. Um, for me, thinking about how long it's going to be there, you know, and all the people that are going to walk past it, uh, and all the great names that are up there already from past winners, so it's really cool to be a part of that. And uh, you, know, you always, I think we all want to win at every single racetrack there is, and uh, you know, to be the first time we won here last year was really cool. It's uh, it's an awesome racetrack. I love coming here, and obviously a lot of great fans here as well. So excited to be here again, and uh, hopefully we can go back to back. And then I had a fan ask too, uh, are you going to try to ride that surfboard, or is it going to go up on the bottom? <laughs> Uh, it, I'm pretty sure it's going to go on a wall. Too old to learn. I did it some when I was young. You know, I grew up uh, on the coast, so I did a little bit, but I was never very good at that. Go next <laughs> to Steve Post, and then Kathy, and then the Wolfgang. Steve Post, Motor Racing Network. Martin, uh, you have qualifying coming up. Sitting on pit road, going through the process that we're now going through to get dressed and partner, what's that like as a driver? Are you just, is it totally out of your control? What, what is that process like as you sit up there for, I don't know, what may seem like an eternity? It, I, I don't like it. It's very annoying. <laughs> you don't have to worry about what other people are doing to try to go out and get a good lap in. It's like, you know, I, you like to just have to worry about yourself and what you need to do, but obviously it's a different deal. So it's like sitting on the freeway here, you know, and it's not moving. And you're like, hopefully you're in the right lane when it gets rolling, you know, and that's kind of what it's like, I guess. But uh you just, uh, you know, I think we didn't make the third round in Vegas when it got, you know, w when they waited till a minute and 40. You kind of, it's like the last guy that gets that green for the second lap or whatever is, is going to be the fastest. So I don't know. It's um, it's kind of crazy, but we'll see how it plays out today. Hopefully better than uh, Vegas. We'll go Kathy, Wolfgang, then Bob. Oh, it would be awesome. I mean, uh, yeah, obviously we, we're here to win. We want to win. Um, you know, I, the fans were, were yelling at me to put 78 on there. And I was like, well, that's fitting. It makes sense. I mean, when I won the race, I was 78. So uh, I thought it made perfect sense. And, uh, you know, it was cool to be able to do that. And hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be able to get another one in there for next year. Wolfgang? Yeah, uh, Wolfgang Monzer from Germany Rangeport Press Agency. I suppose maybe you still have uh, contact with your former team owner, Barney, with our furniture row. What's your personal opinion uh, under special circumstances or the right circumstances? Do you think personally he will make a return to NASCAR racing? Well, we've, we talk every week. He's been, uh, he's been watching. He's been talking to us and, and telling us we've been doing a good job and things like that. And I think it's probably a bit of relief for him that he doesn't have to worry about, uh, you know, all the, all the all that comes along with being a team owner, and he's just able to enjoy it. So I told him he needs to get to the track soon. We'd like to see him. Hopefully we can get him around. But as far as your question on whether he'll be uh, back as, I don't know if you mean as like a team owner, um, I honestly have no idea. Uh, we haven't talked about it. He hasn't mentioned it. I'm, I'm, my best guess is no, but uh, I guess you can never rule out anything. Go next to Bob and then to Jeff. Uh, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports, uh, Martinsville next week. Um, do you think what happened there um, last year will impact the way people race at the end? Uh, that's tough to answer, really. I mean, I don't know. Um, I would say that it's probably not going to be – there's less chance of it being like that just because it's not a race to get into the Final Four. Uh, you know, I, I would think it would be a little bit more tame and, and normal to what we've seen there in the past. Um, that's kind of the best answer I can give you. Go next to Jeff and then to Dustin. You obviously did the tire test here. Um, do you know which one was close to what um, you tested or, or what, what they came back with? And um, are you expecting that it'll be like a really high wear type of race? Yeah, I, I don't really know exactly what tire they came back with. Um, and, uh, and usually it's a combination of things that you ran, but you never ran all four. They, they kind of split up lefts and rights for different cars and things like that. Um, so I don't think we actually ran on this set of four tires. 
Um, but I really don't know. I didn't. I didn't even ask. I, I just get in and drive and hope, you know, try to figure it out from there. So uh, no preconceived notions, I guess. So I really don't know what to expect. Uh, you know, we did one lap runs today. So um, generally, this this track is high tire wear. No matter what, I would say, no matter what kind of tires they bring, they're going to wear out. They're, the pace is going to fall way off on longer runs, and it's going to be a big challenge. So uh, I look forward to that. I think that's you know those are the type of tracks that put on the best racing I think in my opinion and and I really enjoy that style so um, looking forward to seeing what they do tomorrow when we do some long runs and we'll go from there. But do, like, like, do people slow down to the point where they're purposely like saving tires and losing pace early in a run to know that they can get it back or does that not happen? Yeah I would say that some people might do it but if they do let's say it, it might be five percent it's not a lot it's just a little and, and it's to the point where maybe they just won't overdrive the car they'll make sure they don't get too far sideways or if they're a little bit tight maybe they won't push it you know they'll just kind of let it come to them so it's not like you just you're running 50 or 60 percent i'm talking you know it's 95 it's 94 maybe it's 98 just depending on how the balance of your car is if it's really good you can go hard it's not going to hurt anything it's really just when your balance is off or maybe it migrates throughout a run and you kind of have to wait for it to come in you don't want to abuse it too much. Dustin? Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, you've talked about earlier in your career in what is now the Xfinity Series, how you won a lot of short track races and had success there. Um, obviously not had the win at a Cup Series race at that type of track. Is that, I know there's a lot of things you want to accomplish. Um, how much, is that, a, is that a gaping hole in your resume that there isn't a short track Cup win or do you look at it and say, hey, look, there's other things I need to be worried about? You know, for me personally, I would say it is a big, it's a big hole. I mean, it, mostly because of how well we performed on those tracks, especially the last couple of years. And you look at the laps we've led at places like Richmond. I mean, so many laps led and dominated races and just can't find a way to finish it. I mean, we've been second at Bristol, third at Bristol, um, led a bunch of laps there um, two years ago in the spring. And so... Just not having one is it, it kind of does get to you a little bit, um, knowing how good we've been at those places. And also, um, I know it's a lot of similar guys came over with you from the 78 team to this team. Uh, still, there's some changes in kind of getting uh, fully a part of Joe Gibbs Racing. A couple runner up finishes. Is this what you expected? Is this a little better than what you thought? Or how do you feel like you, you know, everything's kind of blended in the first four races of the season? Yeah, I, I th honestly, I would say that um, I had high expectations, and I, I feel like we're meeting those, um, which has been has been good. Um, I feel like we have an awesome team, a great bunch of guys. They've really gelled together quickly, and you know f our results the last couple of weeks have showed that we're able to run up front and, and run fast. I still feel like we're we're just off a little bit of our potential, and um, we're still kind of figuring things out, mostly due to the new rules. I would say more than anything with the package and the cars and all that stuff. So. We've been a little bit off on Fridays. Today was another example of that, and um, it feels I feel like we catch up throughout the weekend. And when Sunday rolls around, we're in good shape. So we'll just just see how it goes. But definitely uh, pleased with how things have went, and everybody's done a great job. Claire B. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. So, uh, so Kyle Larson was in here talking about Jazzy thinking he can see the wind. And I remember last year. All you have to do is look to weather forecast and the flags <laughs> and the flags. But Jazzy, your previous engineer honestly believes that you guys won races because of the way you figured the wind out and he's yeah. done long stories and interviews on it do you believe that i mean do you do you believe that they kind of had a key on that and that that kind of moves over to ganassi race well it's not so much figuring out or being able to see the wind it's knowing how to change your car based on what the wind is doing and yeah we've we've had good success in those situations and you know today's a perfect example of that it's you know blowing 30 miles an hour down the back straightaway your car drives handles different in each end of the racetrack so if you can kind of see that um, or I guess get ahead of it and say hey we're going to start practice here with this win that's what we need to do to the car to make it right in both ends of the racetrack it's a huge deal yeah. um, definitely you know something we've uh, we've keyed on for a few years and Jazzy is one of the guys ahead of, uh, you know in charge of that and leading the way on that any additional questions for Martin let's go to Lee <clears throat> Yeah. Was it just kind of like a gift? 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I was ahead of him at the time, you know, and uh, I hadn't raced with him all day, so I really wasn't paying attention. You know, when you get in these races, you, you're so focused on what you're doing, you don't really worry about other guys, whether they have a good day or a bad day or who it is. You don't – you don't – well, I mean, that's fine, but I had no focus on him, you know. And if we were racing together, then yes, I would have. But I was ahead of him. He was behind me. I didn't even know, you know, what the situation was. So you just focus on your own deal, your own thing, and, and trying to make the best day out of, uh, out of what you have going on. And, you know, certainly for us here last year, it was a really good day with, you know, getting the pole and leading the most laps, winning both stages. I mean, it was, uh, you know, the perfect weekend, really. Martin, thanks for joining us today. Good Thank luck you guys. this weekend. Appreciate it. Yep.